So. Right. So hair, has that been your all time thing? Like you've always wanted to do hair? I loved hair. Um, I didn't see myself doing it at first. Um, now my aunt does hair and my great grandmother did hair. You know, she's not alive anymore, but she did hair. So I grew up around it, but I wasn't like into trying to like do it. Um, I went to college. I'm supposed to be a sports medicine doctor. Right? Oh, that's not supposed to be. Um, so I went to Dillard and I graduated in 2010 with my bachelor's of science in public health. Gotcha. So because they didn't really have much opportunity out here, I was just like, well, I'm going to just jump into what I love and that's doing hair. Mm-hmm. And I always make a joke. I say, well, the degree is from my mom. That's her thing. Now this is my thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> so she can't say I ain't go to college. I ain't finished. I ain't get my degree. I have it. So now it's time for me to jump into what I want to do. But yeah, it was hard to really find ex- um, any type of work in the PT field, especially by me not having experience. And I think that's the only downfall when it came down to my ex actual um program that they didn't give us like like how nursing programs have clinicals and you can like shadow people and stuff like that to get the experience before you finish we didn't have that so when i was going to look for different jobs and stuff or even shadow people they're like well you don't have any experience and stuff so i was like well i didn't did all this i don't have time you don't have time, <laughs> I got time all that was that. you got all of these student loans yeah. right up all of that and now you can't even all do anything in your field Mm-mm. now listen i got you know i'm an entrepreneur at heart Mm-hmm. And so I'm just like, if you're not going to college to be a doctor, you ain't going to college to be a lawyer. Mm-hmm. You're not going to college for something like that where you actually need that college. Right. Well, then we're not going to college. We about to start you off in a trade, mm-hmm. get you a business. I'm, not, I'm, you know, I'm working on having multiple businesses that I could just pass on to my kids that mm-hmm. they can just get into it because we don't need to rack up all of that. You know, college they're not teaching us what we need to know in college anyway, right? I mean, no, I ain't gonna say all that, <laughs> but see, but times is different now because then. Like, okay, I graduated high school in 2004, graduated college in 2010. People wasn't really pushing entrepreneurship like that. Right. Like, when we was growing up, it was like, you know, go to school, graduate, go to college. It was that. It was, and then it wasn't a lot of schools that was offering trades. Mm-hmm. Then it was probably like maybe two or three schools that was doing trade programs. But other than that, they was pushing college. That's why they had a lot of college prep schools and stuff yeah. like that. So entrepreneurship wasn't really pushed in. So as I started getting more into the industry and starting to be an entrepreneur, then that's when it really started to become a thing like past like 2012 and on up until uh, now yeah i agree um so how long have you been doing hair i've been in the industry for i've been doing hair for 10 years well really 14 years okay and then um i've been licensed going on uh eight years okay and so this you are like a two-time salon owner right yes so give us a little bit feedback about that because you know you have these Stylist that's doing hair in their kitchen. You know, you got to come with your hair already washed. Um, you got to yeah. find somebody to braid it for you so it can get installed. And then yeah. they're still charging us an arm and a leg. So, I mean, I don't know wh- where that stems from. <laughs> the, you know, not shampooing hair and stuff. And that's just kind of really popped up within the last few years. Like, people not you know, shampoo and hair and all of that stuff. But I guess they didn't see the significance. But if you don't go to hair school, you don't understand it. That's important. Mm, you know, but that's, that's the, the gap. It's yes. the hair. Oh, because okay. that's the first thing you learn in school is shampoo and hair. Yeah. You know? So when you don't, when you don't go those steps to get your license and all that stuff, you don't know the basics. You just have the craft. Gotcha. But you don't you have the, the gift. business. Yeah. You just have that part. And it's more than the talent with this business. And so the hair industry, I hear it can be very brutal, very cruel, it very competitive, be. very catty. Because mm-hmm. it's, you know, women, you know, there are men that does hair as well, mm-hmm. but it's mostly women. Mm-hmm. And so we know women can be catty. Oh, mm-hmm. so um, give us a little insight on how this journey has been for you dealing with other women in the industry. Honestly, being here, I haven't really had any issues. I guess because I'm like very open when it comes down to telling people about different things in the industry. And I got into it when 
people was in it, but it wasn't like a lot of young people that was really like going forward with it. So I kind of like blossomed in people's eyes when it came down to the industry. Cause when I got out of school, like I was into like fashion shows, like Victoria's Secret, Runway Show and all of that stuff. So I put together like a glam squad. Mm. So before Stupid Kids and all that other stuff, I had hair glam squad. Gotcha. So with that, it was a collective group of hair stylists, makeup artists, and barbers from around the city of New Orleans. So we had about 15 of us. And we did a lot of the fashion shows, hair shows, and we was the go-to team for the for any show within the southern region. Gotcha. And we did that straight for two years. So I had like I was the go-to person that people wanted to be a part of the team because I was making the connections with all of the different shows. And pop-up shops was like like monthly it wasn't like every day or every week like right, it every is weekend. now mm-hmm. so when you was getting the opportunities to go out of town to do different things people wanted to jump on it but i was the key person that you had to talk to okay to get to it so i enjoyed it like i really had a good time with that and even with having a team then we put together our event for essence so we do an event for essence every year it's a big pop-up shop um that we do at the hilton garden inn gotcha. and now it'll be what well, it'll be nine years this year that we've been